This conference will now be recorded. Hello, welcome to the class. Nal. Yes. Okay. So I'll be just uh, we, we are doing uh, obstetrics EMQ session, and the questions will be in front, and you can answer. If anything goes, uh, then uh, later on I'll be explaining. Okay. So okay. So, 26-year-old woman admitted with 4 cm of dilatation. Pregnancy was uncomplicated. After 4 hours, she was dilated to 5 cm. Then the ARM is done. 2 hours later, cervix still 5 cm. So, what are your thoughts? What should be the answer? H. Yes. Uh, yes. So uh, H is the answer. That is uh, uh, because after four hours, actually there should be two uh, centimeter dilatation. So it is lesser than that. So it is mm -hmm. a delay in the first stage of labor. So according to the guideline, there should be ARM first after the oxytocin. Mm -hmm. And uh, so ARM has already been done. So answer would be oxytocin and before oxytocin according to the uh, a nice guideline always pain relief and ctg so these are the explanation so, so this is delay in the first stage of labor so what we need to do we, these are the options we have so we are doing oxytocin and this is all about the oxytocin from the new guideline if the oxytocin is there patient has to be given pain relief and CTG monitoring will be done. Okay. Now come to the question number two. Primary gravita has been diagnosed with a slow progress of flavor at 4 cm. Uh, she was admitted 4 hours ago, contracting at home 2 hours after her rupturing membrane. Epidural is there and the oxytocin has already been um, commenced. So what will be the like next thing? Yes. So, according to the NICE guidelines, first stage of labor, patient should be examined after four hours. And after oxytocin, also, patient should be examined after four hours. So after four hours, for advise four hourly vaginal examination. So answer is this. Okay. So the primary gravida in spontaneous labor, 41 weeks, diagnosed to failure at five centimeter dilatation. Oxytocin was commenced four hours later. She is six centimeter. Fetal heart rate is normal, and the baby is at the level of spine. So what to do? E. e yes okay so uh, like uh, as the progress is there but the head is not descending at the level of issues so we have to kind of expedite the birth because uh, like Hello. 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 
हेलो या या हेलो एक मिनट हाँ. इशू या या सो देयर इज अ डिले इन द इट इज नॉन प्रोग्रेस ऑफ लेबर एंड हेड एट द लेवल ऑफ इशियल स्पाइन सो बिकॉज़ ऑफ दैट we have to consider doing cesarean section so answer should be cesarean section and cesarean section for the this is a cesarean section for maternal reason okay yes uh, next one can i see the previous slide um, this one uh, this one yes hmm. oh, okay ma'am okay so another so 32 year old multi para had an oxytocin in labor for the slow progress ctg had a baseline on 150 uh, uh, 150 heart baseline variability 1 to 3 bpm for last 45 minutes they have no decelerations so what to be done so clue uh, variability is suspicious ctg mm hmm so first uh, we will reduce uh, symptom patient is had symptoms in all yes so basically you have to uh, basically you have to start conservative measures <laughs> so there is one uh, variability less than uh, one to three less than 5 for 45 minute this is a one number feature suspicious mm. ctg so we have to start mm. conservative so according to this like it should be offer fluids and courage to mobilize change to lateral position and also oxytocin has to be stopped okay okay so this is the according to the new guideline so the, uh, this is the amber sign because the variability was less than 5 beats for 45 minutes so this is the mm -hmm. suspicious gravidad 2 para 1 for the cervical assessment at 17 weeks she had a preterm birth at 30 weeks transvaginal tvs can show cervical length 20 mm so what should be done Hmm. Hmm. No. You or we are confused between the two. Hmm. Ma'am, you or we? Yeah. You or we? Okay. so now you have to find so it will be v you can offer both options so offer this is from the guideline nice preterm what is says that offer prophylactic vaginal progesterone or prophylactic cervical surplus to the women who have history of preterm birth or and tvs less than show cervical length less than 25 so here two criteria are met So according to the nice preterm, answer is B. Okay. This is the same thing. Twenty-three-year-old primary gravidus scanned for twenty weeks of gestation have a cervical length of twenty uh, mm. Now here, only uh, there is no risk factor because she is a primary gravida. Only is TVA mm. less than twenty. So what will be answer here? Yeah, you. Hmm. Here it will be you, because provided lactic uh, uh, progesterone. If only one thing, patient has got history of previous loss or TVS shows less than twenty. So now you got to understand when the two factors were there, we were offering two options. Either of that the patient can choose. 
if only one risk factor, then we are offering only vaginal progesterone. So, uh, Gravida, a 34-year-old primary Gravida LEDs has been done. Cervical length was done and cervix found to be 18 mm. So, what should be done? Nam Q. Hmm. Q prophylactic cervical circlas. So if the TVS shows less length and there is a history of cervical trauma or preterm prom, then it will be it will be prophylactic cervical circlas. So there are three scenarios and all three scenarios are different. Now, uh, a 30 year old woman with, uh, admitted with sudden uh, onset of uh, breathlessness, difficulty in breathing, mild cough. She is experiencing left pain in the left calf that becomes swollen and tender. She was examined and tachycardic. Oxygen saturation is 93%. Leg shows features of DVT. You suspect PE and comments around therapeutic dose of heparin. So basically, you have to uh, 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 find it out single most appropriate initial investigation to confirm the diagnosis. So what should be the answer? Uh, compression uh, D, option D. Hmm. Option D because the plus then so this is the explanation from the guideline if the patient with suspected pe who have symptom of dvt should have mm -hmm. bilateral com a compression duplex usg to be performed so answer mm -hmm. is okay so 36 year old woman uh, with sudden chest pain difficulties uh, she has been well in her pregnancy she uh, uh, she tells that her aunt suffered from dvt in, during pregnancy she was examined she has no feature of dvt but bilateral chest crepitation uh, crepitation uh, and the oxygen saturation is 92. Uh, she is suspected to have pe and therapeutic dose of anoxaparin started so what investigation to be done Um, uh, C. Yes, C. Why C? This is the answer. So whenever there had been a uh, P suspicion, first the chest X-ray is done. If chest X-ray depends on whether it is normal or normal, VQ scan or CTPA would be done. Hmm. A 22-year-old woman uh, with a clinical feature of pulmonary embolism, she have no symptom of DVT family history of breast cancer she has a suspicion of pe she was given a dose of uh, lmwh so what should be the answer no option b or t Yeah, option B is the answer because a chest X-ray and VQ scan because her mother, her CTPA causes exposure to the um, high dose of radiation. Breast cancer. Mm. breast cancer already had in the family. So we will avoid CTPA. So answer is chest X-ray and VQ scan. Okay, so 30-year-old woman admitted with a diagnosis of DVT and her booking weight was 65. Now, uh, last measure weight is 69. Delta perin mm -hmm. has been 
started. Re uh, renal function test is fine. She has been diagnosed with ODE. Now oh, you have to tell single appropriate. So instructions are so you have to tell single most appropriate monitoring for antithrombotic treatment. So how you would monitor? How would you monitor this woman? Normal monitoring is so not required here. Um, option M. Hmm. Monitoring is not required. Very nice. Why? Because uh, according to the guideline, monitoring is required when the uh, in the extremes of uh, weight are there. Patient is less than 50 kg or 90 kg more, or renal other complicating factors are there, such as renal impairment or recurrent VTE. Okay, so cesarean section was performed. Patient is on delivery. He developed uh, DVT at 36 weeks, and uh, like uh, she was induced as for 41 plus four weeks. She has a PPH because of the uterine atony. Her dose of delta pain was omitted. Her cesarean section was done under epidural. She was commenced a uh, heparin. Again, uh, four hours after the epidural catheter removed. So, how, what, what, what way the monitoring to be done? We have to monitor her. Hmm. Unfractionated heparin, therefore, option O. O is what? No, platelet count yeah o or o or q no. every two three, three. yes uh, it will be o so um the patient Having UFH should be monitored, uh, platelet count monitoring every two to three days from uh, four to 14 days until heparin is stopped. So now again here, uh, patient has come for the joint obstetric hematology clinic because they are on thromboprophylaxis. For each woman, single next step of management has, been, has to be told. So now you have to tell the most important next step of management. Okay. So 28 mm. year old patient on warfarin, she reports her LMP six weeks back and she has a positive test. So what should be the single next step? Mm, stop warfarin. Stop warfarin and start? No more. Start heparin, otherwise she will have she will have mm -hmm. um, embolism mm -hmm. again. So warfarin should not be given in first three months because it causes mm -hmm. embryopathy, hypoplasia of nasal bridge, congenital heart defect, ventricomegaly, agenesis of corpus callosum, stippled epiphysis. It happens in five percent of the fetus. Mm -hmm. uh, the thirty-two year old woman in her first visit screened for hiv confident that it will be negative she found to be positive she has been counseled and uh, about the um, antiretroviral therapy now you have seen her she's concerned about the state of her mom, mind uh, see So, uh, answer is to assess for depression now. Now also, then four to six weeks, then three, four months postpartum. Madam, what is the difference between booking and now? She has attended her first visit. 
booking means that when the patient come see booking visit the patient will come for the first antenatal visit and mm. at the first antenatal visit when the patient is booked all history is taken and all investigations are done now this is the second visit because she oh. has come positive now uh, you are concerned about her the state of her mind so you have to patient uh, assess the patient now okay thing has already been done in past okay hmm yes ma'am yes so this is this is from the guideline so assessment of uh, 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 antenatal and postnatal depression to be taken at booking 4 to 6 weeks postpartum 3 to 4 week uh, month according to the nice but our uh, the scenario what we are seeing patient she is uh, she has come for the next visit after book, booking because the hiv test come positive because of that the answer is now 4 to 6 weeks postpartum and 3 to 4 week, months postpartum okay hmm 15 year old woman booked at 10 to 3 weeks she was screened for hiv std screening was done counsel for the baseline investigation despite of repeated attempts to convince her to discuss this with her partner she is having unprotected sex so and she has not been able to do so so what to be done mm 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 no no she is putting her partner at risk and she is not telling so mm-hmm. what we should do um uh, um in or o no no we have to break confidentiality hiv is uh, any investigation is in uh, you know this is in confidential is confidential thing mm. so no, no other person will be given knowledge about a one person test so hmm. now what she is doing uh, the uh, like the repeated attempts are done so that she can so that she can go and tell her partner but she is not doing that so what is happening hmm. in that situation the partner is at risk of getting hiv now you said hmm. what the team will do and what the social worker will do basically the partner has to be informed and that will be without hmm. her consent so it is breaking confidentiality okay so this is given in the guideline also breaking confidentiality in the order to inform the partner of index positive patient is concerned sanctioned as last resort by who hmm. hiv for primary gravida at 36 plus 6 is she is compliant with the medication viral load is less than 50 at 36 weeks so here you have to tell the most able next step in their manage most able next step okay yeah. yes patient labor can be allowed okay hmm so vaginal delivery less than 50 consider pre labor cesarean section when it is 50 to 399 recommend cesarean section if it is more than 400 counts okay here the answer has already been given so the patient has got uh, like 500 copies that means uh, immediate is like uh, patient should be offered cesarean section and is usually cesarean section by 39 weeks so l is the answer okay so to you here a uh, complication uh, like uh, single best diagnosis of uh, complication you have to tell so uh, 27 year old woman attend within scan at 28 weeks she has mcda pregnancy there is a dis- discordance of 15% uh 
maximum pool is 1.5 centimeter in 1, 7.5 centimeter in 12. So what should be your answer? So in both sets, there has been difference in the, there has been the vertical pocket is less. So it is kind of hmm. going to oligohydramnus in both twin, isn't it? Hmm. So what should be there? And there is a G, G and, and there is a difference in the growth also. 15%. Yes, so what it should be. So it translated. See, see. Uh, for uh, you said the answer selective growth restriction, but for selective growth restriction, weight discordance should be more than 20%. But the question that what we are doing, growth discordance is only 15%. So it is discordant growth with normal like a volume. Hmm. Okay, so here now uh, 20, uh, 28 year old woman with 31 weeks of pregnancy. Ultrasound assessment shows uh, fetal weight for one twin is 900. Another is 1200. One has oligohydramnios and reverse and diastolic flow next another twin has absent and, and diastolic flow hmm. so what should be a single time uh, single best time for delivery SGR the delivery is done by 30-32. So we have to deliver them by 32 weeks. A, A is the answer. Mm So this is the SGR. If uh, it is type 2 and 3, then patient to be delivered by 32 weeks. Okay. Hmm. So if the patient has got, uh, like, in the patient, what we are doing has an absent and reverse flow. So it is type 2. And so it should deliver by 32 weeks. Now, uh, gravidus patient who has previous vaginal delivery uncomplicated MCDA twins uh, with normal growth velocities at 20 weeks. Uh, ultrasound scan at 34 weeks gestation have a weight discordance of 10 with normal umbilical mm -hmm. artery. First twin is cephalic, second is breech. So uh, single best time for delivery. So MCDA twin, when will be the time for delivery? 34 to 36 plus 6 weeks. MCDA by 34? Oh, sorry, MCD. Uh, no, no, ma'am. 32 to 34 weeks. No. MCD is 36. Uh, yes, yes. Uncomplicated uh, uh, 36. Yes. So, L. L. So with monochorionic twins, time of birth should be discussed and offered elective birth from 36 weeks onward with an administration of antenatal steroid unless there is an indication to deliver earlier. So answer is an induction by 36 weeks of gestation. Hmm. So 30-year-old carrier of a hemophilia with low factor 8 levels. Anipulide shows high result. For counseling, she has to go for invasive test. 
so now you have to find out single most appropriate management what should be done she has to go for invasive testing isn't it hmm so who will give factor eight or decimal percent so we you have to measure the factor prior to invasive testing it has to be normal hmm so um, aim for the factor at least 0.5 to cover surgical invasive procedure so measure the plasma factor level so if it is all already 0.5 iu per ml or more you can go ahead with it otherwise the treatment would be required so how would you know whether the treatment is required or not you have to do consider measuring the factors so answer is l measure factor madam but madam yes. the question in it's uh, written low levels of uh, factor 8 uh with low levels has been informed yes with uh, see hemophilia a will have low level only but how much low okay whether you have to treat her before immunosynthesis or not how you will get to know by that unless you measure it you will not be able to know that okay because of that the no. measure the factor has to be done so carrier of severe hemophilia at 8 weeks her husband is healthy booking investigation are fine severe hemophilia a at 8 weeks in the booking visit hmm. so what to be done c yes so uh if the patient has severe uh, thrombophilia uh, hemophilia a that is a x uh, linked disorder so we have to find out the sex of the baby so fetal sexing either it by it can be done by uh, like uh, it, it can be done by this uh, nipd or mm -hmm. it that is the fetal sex determination by free fetal dna by 9 weeks if it is missed then cvs if it is missed then it is in the third trimester because depend on that they will decide on the mode of delivery so we are dealing the question where it is 8 weeks of gestation so answer is nipd fetal sex determination by ff dna from 9 weeks of gestation so this is the explanation this is the same thing again no uh, recombinant factor 8 has been ordered for 30 year old women scheduled for cvs with a abnormal nuclear transfusion c factor levels are 0.3 international so what to be done oh optimize the health but uh, you see optimize the health is a very generalized term any medical condition you can say optimize but you know the your patient has got le less factor 8 so what you will do we will give factor 8 but there is no option here c major plasmatic plasma clotting concentrate before oh, and oh yes 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 and this is a direct line from your guideline Mm -hmm. in factor concentration before and after and four to six hours to facilitate mm -hmm. using so answer is n and this is direct line from your guideline this is the guideline line okay mm -hmm. okay carrier of hemophilia b delivered a male infant uh, suspected to have mild to moderate hemophilia required testing to exclude this diagnosis is born now C. Yes, yeah, so you can do cord blood. So this is a neonatal management. Cord blood sample recommended for all babies. Retest six months old. Main 
little infant who is known to be a hemophilia carrier midwife disc wants to discuss ke vitamin k administration so the baby woman is a carrier and you have to give vitamin k to the baby so what you will do no uh, first we will test the baby b yes but uh, what you answer is f you have to withhold vitamin k they are asking about vitamin oh. k unless the results are available if the baby oh. has got normal result baby can be given im injection if it is less level then they will give oral oral oh. the when you need with factors vitamin k oral following unit blood spot screening and the pressure to be uh, sustained to avoid excessive bleeding so they will blood, baby test would be done so now uh, this is the complication of from the pregnancy and you have to tell the most appropriate treatment or the management plan at the primary gravida 28 weeks of gestation fbc has been done and the hemoglobin count is 98 iron deficiency anemia what is the answer l yes oral iron so women with established iron deficiency should be given 100 200 elemental iron daily so this is from the guideline apart from this they want iron to be taken empty stomach one hour before meal with the vitamins or orange juice to maximize absorption so the patient is given selective cesarean section at 36 week blood loss is 30% of her blood volume eight units of blood has been cross matched so what is the single most appropriate management of the treatment plan so eight it has been done h h h is what fresh frozen plasma cell salvage no mom fresh frozen plasma see fresh frozen plasma is when uh, they have they are asking you out how many packed cells are given rbc then you will say that you know for every packed six uh, rbc uh, six pack cell four units are given then it is the dosing but when more than 20 uh, like 20 ml 20% of the blood has been lost then it will be cell salvage hmm okay okay so answer hmm. so answer is intraoperative cell salvage transfusion now the patient has a vaginal birth and uh, th- 3.6 kg weight baby uh, at 39 weeks pregnancy is uncomplicated she examine and found to have breach she is 3 cm so what is the single most appropriate step so now the patient is in the labor 3 cm she is uh, it is a breech baby so what should we do yeah ecb now uh, is there an option no then it will uh, uh, b b b what uh, d for d d d for daily yes 
because uh, before the, uh, the patient goes for a vaginal birth we have to find out whether the contraindications are there or not we need to check to rule out extended neck and the footling presentation so it is patient is in the early labor so we can consider doing usg so the patient is under midwifery care she present in labor at 39 b 9 cm dilated with a frank breech membranes are intact two vaginal births has been uncomplicated so what should be the next step e Yes, ideally the answer would be A, but she is third gravida. She has a baby of 3.8 kg, and we don't know the weight of baby now. Mm -hmm. So, because the answer about the weight is already there, mm -hmm. so answer becomes C. But if the answer is C is not there, then answer would be A. Okay. Okay. So, three-year-old woman, forty weeks of gestation, throughout pregnancy, fetal presentation documented as cephalic. She is six centimeter with intact membranes. Membrane ruptured. Vaginal examination complete. Breach at the level of spine. No, this is also C. Uh, C the so breach is at the level of spine. Breach is not descending. Are you getting? She is eight centimeter, but breach is not descending. Descent in the second stage of labor is necessary step for vaginal breach birth, but the breach it is not descending. It is at stuck at the spine, and at if it is stuck at the spine, so only one option. Cesarean section. L cesarean section for fetal reason. Okay. The, according to the guideline, adequate descent is prerequisite for encouragement in active stage of labor. So, in the question, descent is not there. 90 year old gravida with a history of uh, seizures with the blank spells with associated with unresponsiveness, followed by rapid recovery. She's suffering. Uh, uh, last uh, she has been suffering these from back as she can remember last attack was uh, uh, a week ago so you have to spell most likely cause of symptom hey. yes so uh, absence is a blank spell is the word that help you in answer 21 year old woman with 11 weeks of gestation she she uh, has an, a seizure that is described by bilateral jerking postictal confusion and sleepiness her mother said she had sudden loss of consciousness and she with an uncontrolled fall without warning Bilateral jerking, postictal confusion are the keywords. Q. Tonic scissors. Okay. So, patient is suffering, a 20 week patient 
suffering from variable symptoms same to time muscle contraction followed by relaxation on only one side of body she has unusual eye movement numbness tingling feeling something under crawling under strain so sometime accompanied by racing heart so patient is having varying kind of presentation g yes focal seizure so focal seizure is a partial or local onset seizure there could be jerking movements hearing problem changes in blood pressure uncontrollable eye movements anything could be there so this is the types of seizure now 34 year old woman so here the patient uh, uh, sepsis either in pregnancy or during labor so we have to find out most likely cause of sepsis now 28 year old woman uncomplicated pregnancy four discharge six hour after delivery now she is five days her delivery uh, she is 37 uh, 38 temperature vomiting diarrhea muscle pain generalized rash rash is macular rash paraxia tachycardia hyperemic conjunctiva and, uh, uh, and her chest is clear lower abdominal tenderness uterine 16 week size perineum is clean so what could be the reason so keywords here macular rash conjunctival hyperemia t staphylococcus oh toxic shock syndrome yes so these are the keywords so there is a rash that is a macular erythroderma apart from this there will be this squamation of palm and sole again um, the patient is at 39 weeks of gestation admitted with a fever she is having shedding of skin palm and sole nausea vomiting when examined she is found to be hypotensive bruising she has thrombocytopenia impaired liver impaired liver enzymes perineum is clean uterus is standard palpation no respiratory or cardiovascular sign हाँ देखो न्यू दिस इज स्टेप्टोकोकस एंड व्हाई बिकॉज़ द शेडिंग ऑफ स्किन इज़ देयर शेडिंग ऑफ स्किन इज़ देयर दिस इज स्टेप्टोकोकल व्हाट वाज इन द स्टेफाइलोकोकल रैशेस so this is basically you have to know the difference between staphylococcus and streptococcal toxic uh, shock syndrome so in staphylococcus rash diffuse macular erythroderma and desquamation of skin palm and sole 10 to 14 days after illness here it is erythromatous erythromatous macular rash and rash is in 10% of the cases disquamation may be there okay so gravity uh, uh, third attends for the 20 week scan placenta covering internal loss fetal anatomy fine she reports to have spotting in early pregnancy so what should be the next plan low lying placenta at 20 weeks 
What should we do? PVS at 32 weeks. Yes. Now, the patient has cesarean delivery. Presenta is low lying at 20 weeks. USG performed at 32 mm -hmm. weeks. Presenta is still low lying. Woman is asymptomatic in the pregnancy. What should be the next plan? So patient is asymptomatic. Hmm. So what to be done? Before delivery, what you will want to know? Again at 36 weeks, USG. Yes. You will do 36 weeks uh, because the patient is asymptomatic. Redo uh, the TBS at 36 weeks. If the presental position changes, consideration for channel birth. So this is the chart. Hmm. Okay. Here you have to find out the single most likely cause of collapse. Now the patient has got central chest pain, radiating to back. She's 30 weeks pregnant. Pain is excruciating. Found which is cardia, blood pressure is very 7 lead is attached, blood sample sent for cardiac enzyme analysis. So what could be that? H. Myocardial infarction. See, in myocardial infection, mm. it is, uh, it, the pain will not radiate to back. It will reduce oh. the left side arm. Mm -hmm. Then B. D? Ectopic pregnancy? B, B. No, no, ma'am. B, B for Bombay. Yes. So it is dissecting aneurysm of aorta because it is a central chain chest pain and pain radiating mm -hmm. to back. If you find any question, mm -hmm. the pain is radiating to the left side of arm then it will, it will be MI. Hmm. 39 year of old woman, uh, like collapse at home. She's 38 weeks, provides a history of lying on the couch while watching TV. She became breathless and her, um, brought on oxygen. Pulse is 100, blood pressure is 150-80. She has ronchi in the chest. What has happened? So she was lying on the couch and vomited. Oh, aspiration A. Aspiration immunitis. L history mm -hmm. of lying, vomiting, chest having ramkai. Mm -hmm. 30 year old woman with diabetes, collapsed at home, nausea, vomiting, discomfort. Shortly after symptoms, she has a pain radiating to her arm, neck, and jaw. And she has collapsed. Husband called ambulance. Her oxygen and she is on oxygen. Blood sent on the investigation. Diabetes well controlled. Blood pressure normal. So now answer. And this is H. Yes. This is MI. Because she has just discomfort. Pain radiating to her arm. Neck drum. Okay, so 40. Now, here you have to find out this is all about the chicken pox. So, the patient developed, at, she's at 21 uh, weeks of gestation. Chash developed two days ago. She's very anxious and uh, she has no symptoms. What to be done? So, two days has been passed. So, treatment cannot be offered. Hmm. So, what next hmm. you arrange for her? She's Q. She, Q. She's anxious. So, you refer her to the fetal medicine unit after five weeks. Hmm. Now, the patient is for CVS on the account of raised NT. She's 13 weeks. She developed rest 24 hours. Of <coughs> She's on acyclovir. So, what should be the next appropriate management? When the immunosuppression D. D. 
so immunosynthesis can only be done when the rashes are crusted because after mm. the rashes are crusted uh, patient will be not be infectious mm. is it now here the patient has vasa previa and you have to find out the single most appropriate management so the patient has a low lying placenta 20 weeks and 32 weeks she has vasa previa so what is the management if yes so this is according to the guideline the patient with a prenatal diagnosis of vasa previa cesarean delivery by 34 to 36 weeks of pregnancy in asymptomatic woman the patient was diagnosed vasa previa at 22 weeks follow up scan at 32 weeks now here it is vasa previa type 2 cervix is 1 cm what cervix 1 cm short that means she is at a risk of delivery at any time labor any any time she will deliver so what you should e e is what um so corticosteroids and um, elective lscs at 32 to 34 weeks you will admit the patient oh mm. One centimeter cervix and a second degree was a second degree was a previa. So if she goes in labor, she will not be able to come back by the time the baby will. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yes. So admit and administer uh, admit enter delivery administer corticosteroids. Okay. So decision. This is from the guideline. Decision for prophylactic uh, hospitalization. From thirty to thirty-two weeks depend upon the mm, patient. Uh, the vasa uh, previa confirmed. Uh, the case has to be individualized. And what are the risk factor? Multiple pregnancy, antenatal bleeding, and the preterm threatened preterm labor. So, patient that what we are discussing, she is at a risk of preterm labor. She has grade two vasa previa. So, we are we want to admit and deliver her. Uh, After steroids, so because of that, the answer is B. Hmm. Okay, so thirty-year-old multi-para with a vaginal birth. So next, here you have to tell the most uh, appropriate next step. So here, yeah, it is very important to know that whether they want mo uh, mo next step or whether they want to know best management, because with small changes in the word, answer changes. so here they want next step so 30 year old woman with vaginal birth following placenta delivery started bleeding oxytocin has been given and uh, uh, intramuscular oxytocin has been given and the placenta is also complete completely uh, removed so what should what to be done h argumentary H or P. Hmm. Basically, they their answer is P only. So good idea is to like because they have already given oxytocin, but it, it was a uh, third stage of labor. Okay. Hmm. It is. oxytocin infusion so this is the active management of labor they have shown active third stage mm -hmm. so patient started bleeding after active management of third stage of labor because of that next step will be palpate the uterine fundus and rub to simulate contraction mm -hmm. okay so if they say that oxytocin has been given by iv or oxytocin infusion has been started then you will uh, same imithargin it is at third stage of labor and after that the patient started bleeding so rubbing uterus is the answer woman has forceps delivery 
episiotomy has been repaired placenta found to be uh, complete uterus is contracted now the no contract uter atonicity is not there placenta is not the cause so what could be the cause what to how to what to do now E examination and anesthesia. Yes. Why? Because there could be some uh, unidentified tissue and trauma from where the bleeding is happening. Because the uterus is contracted and placenta is already removed. Okay, so here you have to find single most investigation or in intervention that you would perform to the woman. So 30-year-old woman... Uh, in antenatal care of 12 weeks first year she was first pregnancy she was smoker her nt scan uh, shows low allopurinol risk 18 weeks she has ecogenic bowel so what to do so what is the investigation most appropriate for her no uterine hand doppler in N. Okay, but no. N or O. So, uh, ecogenic bowel is a high risk factor. So, hmm. umbilical artery scan has to be done from 32 weeks every 2 to 4 weeks. This is from the new guideline. So, now, these are the high, these are the risk factor from the new guideline. And Ecogenic bowel is the high risk factor. Okay, so high risk hmm. factor management, high risk factor management is going for like uh, like uh, the if, if the patient has to get uterine artery Doppler. Next step will be the uterine artery Doppler. If it is normal, then serial scan from 32 weeks every two to four weeks till delivery. So next step, if you say, then it will be the uterine artery Doppler. After that, this pathway would be the answer. What they are saying, single most appropriate step, they are saying. If they say next, then it will be uterine artery Doppler. If they say most appropriate, then this will be the management plan. Okay. Actually, the questions formed from previous guideline and the guideline has come new. So, there would be no, a clear answer and question will not be there. So, no, we have to practice one interruption. We have to learn both the guidelines or only the new guideline? No, no. You will get question from new only. These are found from the new guideline. Okay. Yes. New guideline class is there on the YouTube and the Website, you can go through the class. Yes, ma'am. So basically, these questions are formed from the previous guideline. So, 20 week, uh, 20 year old uh, primary gravida scan at 18 weeks, no abnormality, baby is small, and there is polyhydromnios, no risk factor for SGA. What to be done? This is almost same as previous guideline. So there is a severe SGA at, 20, at uh, uh, before 20 weeks 20 weeks of pregnancy. No structural problem. So what could be the reason? This is not, the answer would be from the old guideline. So no structural problem, baby small. What could be the next problem? Next, next problem. No, wh what could be the cause for SGA? How you will find? Infection. No, no, in infection could not be the cause. So early at 18 weeks SGA, chromosomal problem. 
so you will suggest amenocentesis okay this is now this is a direct question from the guideline offer uh, invasive diagnostic te testing offered in severely sga so with structural anomalies or considered as non anomalous fetus detected before 23 weeks of pregnancy and the uterine artery or dopplers are normal so the patient in the discussion she is 28 uh, she is 18 weeks no abnormality and severe sga so so early so there could, there could be possibility of chromosomal lesion so invasive testing has to be done this is this was same in the new old guideline okay now here you have to uh, choose the most appropriate action for the management of the baby now the patient is uh, midwife in the postnatal unit reported that the baby of a mother of type 1 diabetes poorly feeding getting blue uh, these are most commonly associated with breastfeeding pediatrician shows the baby has a heart murmur so what investigate what to be what investigation f echocardiography yes a b b b yeah b would be the uh, investigation most appropriate action yeah it could be b um admit to the fetal unit and organize echocardiography that appears to be the right answer so after two days uh, develop a uh, jaundice severe jaundice requires intensive heat, uh, phototherapy baby requires phototherapy we'll see see your h c or h no polycythemia will not be there basically patient is in the ward so you have to consider patient admit in neonatal care unit and arrange phototherapy okay so a so a okay that's it the paper number 1 has been done now so any question you have no ma'am uh, presently i don't have, i had only one question that we have to do new uh, guidelines have come for uh, sga how peace and chicken pox we have to do, uh, learn those or not yes yes all new guideline has to be done okay okay thank you for joining all the best thank you ma'am